Welcome back to our video studio at the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, IISS. In this video, we depart from our usual routine, which focuses on current strategic issues and ongoing developments that impact Israel's strategic future, and take a look at the past and the stirring historical events that shaped the birth of modern-day Israel. IISS Senior Associate for Public Diplomacy, Barry Shaw, a prolific writer on Israeli affairs, has recently published a book entitled 1917 From Palestine to the Land of Israel, which covers a wide sweep of Zionist endeavor dating back a hundred years. It recounts in fascinating detail the daring exploits of Palestinian Jews and Christian Zionists that played a crucial role in the establishment of a national Jewish home in what was then Palestine. He is interviewed by IISS Director of Operations, Malcolm Dash. I'm most pleased to welcome Barry Shaw, the Senior Associate of Public Diplomacy at the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. He is also the author of Fighting Hamas, BDS and Anti-Semitism, and the new bestseller, BDS for Idiots, a seriously funny humiliation of BDS activists. Today, Barry will be introducing us to his most recent book, 1917, From Palestine to the Land of Israel. Barry, what motivated you to write this book? Well, uh, Malcolm, 1917 was a <coughs> transformative year. It was a time when Palestine was in the grip of the Ottoman Empire. They had tens of thousands of Turkish forces here, backed by Germans and Austrians, and you wouldn't have bet the farm on there being a Jewish state. But by the end of that year, the Turkish army and the Germans had been driven out. The Turkish Ottoman Empire had collapsed, and the door was open from transforming Palestine into the land of Israel. And I thought there was an opportunity here, a very significant time, a hundred years later, to write about some of the deeds and some of the exploits and some of the people that made this thing happen. You did extensive research for your book, and it would be interesting for our viewers to know if you chanced upon any uh, special data that surprised you. And, and perhaps you could elaborate on some of the characters you've drawn in, in your book. Yes, I mean, some of the things that really surprised me was the sacrifice not recognized by the British itself on behalf of the British by a lot of Palestinian Jews. And in the so book, Palestinian, Palestinian Jews? Palestinian Jews, the Jews who are living in Palestine. Don't forget this was Palestine. And they were hammering on the door of the British general staff, both in Cairo and also in Whitehall, uh, to be admitted into the British army to fight on behalf of the British, even before the British were at war against the Turks. On the other hand, the Arabs that were living on this side of the River Jordan were doing, did nothing at that time or during the war to help in the war effort to drive out the Turks. Nothing. They didn't lift a finger. In the book, I also make a comparison with the exploits of Lawrence of Arabia, and the Ar Arabs under Faisal and Hussein on the other side of the River Jordan, who the Bedouin fought only if they were rewarded by treasure troves of gold and weapons and allowed to do the looting. And when the money wasn't forthcoming, they disappeared into the desert. On the other hand, I outline about the book of the exploits of people like, for instance, Jabotinsky and the Jewish Legion, which became a British fighting force in the, the British Army. Aronson's Aaron Aronson and his sister Sarah Aronson, who recruited capable young men to be spies and intelligence agents on behalf of the British and endangered their own life for very little reward, very grudgingly given by the British Army. They were a couple of things that really impressed me. And the final thing that this part of the interview I'd like to mention was an acknowledgement to a meeting of the stars in an alignment of certain important Christian leaders, Christian Zionists, who out of nowhere became, for instance, David Lloyd George, who became the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And without their political assistance, 
I doubt very much, and together with Allenby, who led the forces driving the Turks out of here, I doubt very much whether a Jewish state would have been established for many, many, many decades of at all. In this year of 2017, we will be celebrating the Balfour Declaration, an historic document <coughs> penned a hundred years ago uh, by Lord Arthur James Balfour. Yep. He was the United Kingdom's uh, Foreign Secretary and he wrote that His Majesty's Government view with favour the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. It's also a hundred years since General Allenby, as you've previously mentioned, liberated Jerusalem. You write about these two seminal events in your book. What discoveries did you make and to what extent do those events continue to shape and have impact on contemporary events today? Okay, well first of all Allenby was greatly helped by the expert knowledge intimate knowledge of the territory of Palestine by Aaron Aronson, who was an agronomist. He showed the British where the water was. He showed where the routes could be taken, could not be taken. And I think he greatly assisted to Allenby, acknowledged the as great assistance of Aronson to this endeavor. About the Balfour Declaration, the main point that I make in the book about the Balfour Declaration is the Balfour Declaration says that the British government will use their best endeavors to reestablish the national home of the Jewish people and I question whether they use their best endeavors because my book highlights the collusion and the duplicity of British officials in Jerusalem who were there to implement the British policy which was based on Balfour. But in fact, they were the ones who colluded and stoked up the Arabs at that time to protest the Jewish presence. But, so, but why did they subvert the foreign policy of uh, Britain? The, what was their interest? Well, in the book I name names, and uh, a, a couple of them were, were simply doing it because they were anti-Semitic. One of the heroes of the book is another Christian Zionist who was a British intelligence officer by the name of Richard Minotaur. So you don't need the, uh, my view of this. It was reported, this guy lost his career because he reported to the Foreign Office about the subfusion that was going on by the British officers against the Jews and against British policy at the time. And it resulted in the first major Arab terror attack against Jews in the old city of Jerusalem in which Jews were killed, Jews were injured, women were raped, Jewish properties was destroyed and it was done by the collusion and absence of the British. Um, fast forward a hundred years, and what we're getting today is Palestinian terrorism, Arab terrorism, overlooked by the United Nations, the United Nations organizations, the EU, who are colluding with the Palestinians to deprive Jews of all the state or part of the state. So I uh, finalized my book about that period a hundred years ago and you fast forward to today and you can say the same duplicity of major forces, major organizations, major world bodies with the Arabs against the Jews a hundred years ago and today. So nothing's changed? No, nothing much has changed except we're still here and we're here stronger than we were in 1917. Barry, thanks very much for this interview. I wish you every success with your book which for those who are interested, it's available on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you.